This is actually very similar to the, um, the examples we've already seen. The, the, the difference is that um, we've got some little bits of tape on here to cheat. And um, when, you, when you strike the pipe, if I strike the pipe, uh, let me just uh, strike it here, for example. Okay, you can hear, it's like a tubular bell, isn't it? It's a tubular bell idea. Now, I'm deliberately striking it between these two uh, blue bits of tape because I'm holding it there, and I know that when I hold it there, I force a node at that point. So that's going to force the sort of standing wave that I get. And wherever I hold it, I'm going to force the standing wave pattern that, that, that we'll get just by causing the vibration. Um, but if I strike it uh, actually there at that, at that blue bit of tape, okay, it's not so nice. I'm going to ask Claire to verify that because she admitted earlier on that she's got a very good ear. Didn't you? No, you didn't. Um, so if I strike it in the middle, which of course is where the maximum amplitude is going to be, then you get a much better effect. And you can analyse this. The nice thing about this is if you, if you then do a Fourier analyse it, if you record it and run it through um, something like Ovation or, uh, or any of these sorts of things, then um, you know, these bits of software that you can record and Fourier transform and Fourier analyse, then uh, you get some very, very rewarding results looking at um, all, all the, the, the dominant notes and the harmonics and so on. But uh, it's interesting to know that it does matter. I mean, as Gary said earlier, it does matter where you hold the thing because that will force, you get a nice... I, I can feel a very low note at the moment. It's still going. Some of you might be able to hear it at the front here. But um, it, it does pay to play around with it and, and to, to just put all these marks on it so you know exactly where to hold it. That, credit to, somebody, uh, to uh, Dr. Hugh Hunt um, at Cambridge for that one.